And Jesus watched his friends leave. And that was a percentage of the abandonment that he would have felt when we see another abandonment that happened to him. And we read that also there's a deeper level of abandonment as the abiding presence of his father departed from Jesus at the cross. The book of Malachi says that God is of purer eyes than to look upon evil. And as we looked at that last point, that Jesus bore the sin that the Father left the Son to bear it and to bear the punishment of it. We read in Luke, uh, we read in the Gospel accounts that Christ called out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated for us as, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a painful cry that we overhear. And we see that as that sin is just being dumped upon him, from Genesis 3 on to that time period, to 2009, until however long we've got, that was dumped upon Christ. And as a, another song that we sing sometimes, um, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, it talks about that the Father turned his face away. And we see that there's a darkening. And this darkening was probably only... the, the there was a darkening that even historians talk about, that the Bible talks about as well, of, of the sun going out for a time. And that darkening would only be a fraction of the true darkening that was happening. And as this divine transaction was happening, as the sin was dumped upon the Savior and the Father turned away. It's heavy stuff, but there's one more that there was the turning away of the Father, and then there was the turning toward of the Father. As that sin was placed upon him, and as there was the turning around, then there was the suffering of the Son, not only at the hands of man, but also at the hands of God himself. Isaiah 53, and even as uh, Simon opened this up in prayer, praying, acknowledging the fact that it pleased the Father to crush him. It speaks, the, the Bible speaks from the beginning to the end also of that reality, that heavy reality that needs to be exclaimed and explained and proclaimed much more in Christian churches today. This reality of what's, what's called penal substitutionary atonement, that there was a penalty that we should have paid that was paid by someone else, that was paid by Jesus. And he paid it as a substitute for us. And that atonement that happened, that act, is what brings us to God. Not our goodness, not our cuteness, not our niceness, but the wrath of God being satisfied and, here's another word, propitiated. The Bible speaks about Jesus being the propitiation for our sins, P-R-O-P-I-T, and I forget, I don't know, um, <laughs> propitiation, I can't, I don't have, I can't spell, I can't write. thank you, um, a propitiation that took place, we read about it in 1 John, we read about it elsewhere in the New Testament, that Jesus is the propitiation, propitiation is a word that I want to make sure that I um, read this definition correctly, The propitiation is a sacrifice that absorbs the wrath of, of God. The, the, the word propitiation, you can't really break it up exactly as you can certain other words, but the word pro means for or towards. And, and pitier, I guess it comes from some Latin or Greek word that talks about a, a prayer. And the idea is that it turns something that was against you into something that's for you. Now, when we talk about the cross, there is something that, that is 
so cute and nice and often expressed about the cross. And perhaps some of you have heard this phrase before. And there's gems of truth in it. But I believe it's, it's totally incomplete. Um, I heard the, the Christian message explained this way when I was a, a little kid. Jesus, something else, a man came to Jesus and said, well, Jesus, how much do you love me? And Jesus spread out his arms and says, I love you this much, and then he died. Maybe some of you have heard that, that before. And there is some things about that that are true. But what that is saying, that's, that's called the moral influence theory of atonement, that the cross was a way of showing the world that God already loves you. Showing the world that, that everything is okay. Here's evidence. Here's proof that I love you. Look, Jesus died for you. And what the moral influence theory of atonement would say is that the cross is supposed to change the way that we feel about God. That at looking at the cross and seeing what an amazing demonstration of love we would change our opinion about God. And although this might make me unpopular, I want to say, on the contrary, that the cross changes God's opinion about you. Now that's heavy, but that's the truest thing that I've ever said. The cross propitiates the wrath of God, takes that wrath, absorbs it and turns it into favor. Changes the way that God views a sinner because of what Christ has done. Heavy stuff. We'll have questions and answers and I'll bet there'll be a lot of them. But the cross is the propitiation for our sins. Takes the bad, produces something good.